Hello, chart watchers, and welcome to this Tuesday, July 16th, 2019, Market Watchers Live Show with your hosts, Aaron Swenlin and guest co host, Mary Ellen McGonigal. <laughs> for those of you joining us for the first time today, welcome to the show. And for our regulars, I would like to certainly welcome you back. All right, let's go ahead and take a quick peek at what the market is doing right now. I have got, uh, where, oh, I'll find it. <laughs> anyway, let's go take a peek. I'm going to take on the uh, candle glance that you can find on your homepage. If I can share my screen. Okay. Just one of those mornings. Okay. So if you go into your member tools, you're going to find the candle glance right here. So let's see what's going on. Currently, as you can see, the S&P 500 is up, or I'm sorry, down right now, a little over seven points. Dow Jones Industrials down 23 points. NASDAQ is starting to turn over as well, down about 22 points. Russell 2000, we're actually seeing higher prices right now for the small caps, up 3.54. Wilshire 5000, we're seeing down on the day. Uh, one of the interesting things is the dollar is making a big move to the upside right now. Treasury yields are up, currently reading 2.143%. And USO is up about a third of a percent right now. Gold down $1.13 for GLD, reading at 132%. 40. The VIX is rising, uh, but we're still looking at a reading below 13 at 1275. All right, Mary Ellen, I didn't forget that you were co hosting with me with that pause. <laughs> I was just, it was that pregnant pause where you go, and <laughs> I think you were waiting for that big drum roll. Exactly. Where was that, my producer? <laughs> <laughs> so, anyway, lots to cover today. I think. Oh, yeah. Uh, look at that schedule. Can you tell us all about what's coming up? Oh, yes. We de definitely have certainly a very jam-packed schedule today and upcoming for this week as well. Tomorrow we have Martin Pring joining us. And then the next day on Thursday, Julius de Kempinar will be joining us. And next week, you will not want to miss it. It is a jam-packed week focused entirely on on the ever critical component relative strength. So you're going to hear different views from various experts in relative strength on Monday, Mark Chaikin from Chaikin Analytics, Gaddis Rose, of course, from stockcharts.com. And then on Thursday, both Arthur Hill and Julius de Kempner. So that is upcoming. Uh, today's agenda, we have a lot. We are going to be covering what is called Around the World in 10 Stocks. We're seeing the dollar pick up again today, so a lot of relevance there. Anatomy of a Trade. Aaron and I are going to share some recent trades. I know for me, they're not all going to be uh, positive trades. Uh, 10 and 10, as usual, we will then share with you what we are seeing as far as sector rotation and you will not want to miss momentum sleepers. These are stocks that have been big winners. They're just base building. I would argue they're getting ready for another leg up. So that is today's agenda. Excellent. I am going to get us started with the economic calendar. And it was a busy one today. Uh, lots of interesting news coming out. Uh, right now, as you can see, the first one, retail sales uh, were a little bit low, were a uh, bit higher. 0.1% um, was, um, it actually I flipped those around, around I, I'm sorry, retailers, retail sales actually popped up from 0.1%, uh, which was um, expected to 0.4%. And it, economists are saying that that is good for the consumer driven economy. Import prices, the index was minus 0.9%. This means that the import prices in June fell by the most in the last six months. And they're saying that this is more evidence of falling inflation. Industrial production in June, as you can see, was 0% increase. 
They're saying that uh, U.S. manufacturing might be in a recession just based on the flat production that we saw back in June. Business inventories were up 0.3%. And based on that, the ratio of inventory to sales does, did suggest that it would take 1.39 months to sell it all. The home builder sentiment index was also uh, up by one point to 65. Uh, the home, co home builder confidence is rising and uh, it does still lag. Um, but in you know, 2018, we started to see housing kind of wobble. And since then, we are starting to see some home builder confidence up, uh, despite, I guess, a couple of issues with materials right now. All right, uh, key earnings reports. My goodness, there were quite a bit. Uh, in fact, it will take us two screens to go through them, but let me go ahead and uh, let you know what's uh, up here. I thought some of the interesting ones were Johnson & Johnson, $2.58 versus expectation at $2.42. All of them pretty much were above expectations with the exception, let's see, no, we did not have an exception here. Everybody met their um, earnings estimates. And as far as the others that are up there on the list, page two, <laughs> Canadian Pacific um, came up ahead of expectation, Prologis also ahead of expectations, 77 cents versus 76 cents. First Horizon National Corp was uh, 42 cents versus 37. And uh, reporting after the close, I think it, it, interesting to note, uh, CSX, United Airlines, CTAS, IBKR, Interactive Brokers, and First National FNF. So let's go ahead. I'm going to share some of these charts. I want to start off, though, with... I'm going to actually start off with Prologis right now. So let's go ahead and look at that. So I just wanted to pick up a few of these interesting ones that we're seeing uh, right now. I like this look of Prologis is a little bit frightening, honestly. <laughs> and why would I say that? You know, it's it, we had those great earnings reported. It is up 1%. But when I look at the chart pattern here and I look at what's going on with the PMO, this is pretty much a textbook double top here. And you have your confirmation line would be right here, of course, at the bottom of the, the middle of the M that the double top will make. And so it isn't, uh, it isn't technically a double top until it actually drops before, below that confirmation line. But I am not liking the way that this is setting up. And notice also that we're looking at a PMO cell signal on this chart. So I, I'm not very happy with that. If you ask me, you've got a scooter that is moving lower. We'll have to see. I, I'm going to be very interested to see what kind of volume comes in because if we get a really big uh, pop to the upside on volume and I see a higher top from the two we had pre previously, okay, then I might feel a little bit better about what's going on with Prologis. Another one I wanted to take a peek at is JP Morgan. A lot of the banks clearly uh, were reporting today. JP Morgan um, is, uh, full disclosure, part of my buy and hold um, stock portfolio. Uh, this is one of the stocks I use to be uh, you know, out there for the financial sector. I want to have some exposure there. Uh, right now, though, um, you're looking at a pretty good setup here. Let's look at this with some arrows. We are seeing the PMO rising. It was turning up before the, you know, just above that zero line. You want to see these oscillate to the upside and coming in out of uh, what you might want to call oversold territory here, right there at the zero line, it has started to rise. Question is, what is going on here with the current trends that are, that I am seeing here? So it appears, you know, we had this gap and now we were in a trading range here. There you go. And we popped out, we failed and we pulled back. And generally that's kind of where I like to see a stock go before I get in. So uh, it, at this point it is trading up three quarters of a percent and it is 
coming back out of that trading range. So we got the pop and then we got the pullback and now is the time to get in if you aren't already in here. I would expect to see a breakout above overhead resistance here at about 116. All right, let's look at a couple more here. Next one up I'm gonna show you is uh, Domino's Pizza. I think we talked about this one, Mary Ellen, at one point. We did, yes, that came up uh, yesterday. I think so, or on Chartwise Women, I don't remember which. <laughs> <laughs> All right, here we go, consumer discretionary. Really not uh, happy investors with uh, the news. I didn't actually look this up. Um, I, I don't have the access some, to a lot of the earnings information that Tom does uh, because he follows it so closely. But I sus suspect uh, they didn't make one of the top or bottom lines or revenues didn't come up as expected on Domino's Pizza. That's it right. Was, yeah, weak sales. Uh, yeah, weak sales. You're oh. absolutely right. Q2 weak sales. Mm -hmm. See, I... Yeah. This is why I love having you on the show same, with me. Same store sales dropped. <laughs> <laughs> so here we go. This was the support level right here at those two lows. And we dropped below it. We, in fact, gapped down, ended up below that 200-day EMA and are continuing to drop. The question might be now is where are we going to find some support? I would look here as a possibility at these lower uh, at these lows back in March. But really, I think overall, based on what I'm seeing here with this huge drop, I would actually even look for a drop down to 230. Uh, that PMO is now finally turning negative. Look at the scooter today, just really falling down into the basement. You know, as far as the volume goes right now, you know, the OBV didn't look that horrible. Um, it did fall quite a bit, uh, you know, continued falling yesterday. So we are below those previous lows. I will be interested to see how much volume comes in already. There is a lot uh, and see how far that pushes that OBV downward. And if it comes down below those lows, yeah, I would look for the 230 level. All righty. Um, I'm going to go ahead and show you one other chart really quickly. It is my ultra short term indicators, and then we'll look at that scooter mover of the day. Climactic indicators right now, when I looked at uh, yesterday's readings, you know, we were seeing um, right now, we're seeing a nice pop there on the new highs, but uh, we've pulled way back in breadth, even toward the negative, and we're still seeing that VIX. Uh, in that complacency zone above that moving average, I do flip my flip my VIX and make it with a log uh, scale so that I can have overbought on the top and oversold on the bottom. Right now it is maneuvering here above that average. And to me, that does show some internal strength. You know, we got that pop there and we're seeing the result, I would say, with this decline. Um, buying exhaustion lining up uh, yesterday more than likely, or I'm sorry, not yesterday, the day before. And, you know, I don't think uh, based on this chart, we're going to have to worry too much. Let's go ahead and look at our scooter mover of the day, which is Union Pacific. And you can find the scooter movers of the day uh, very easily just from your dashboard over here to your scooters. And there you are, you can just pick those out. And there's my UNP. The scooter is up currently just over 16 points. And uh, well, let's get this in the right format. This is silly. All righty, <laughs> there we go. I thought this one was interesting because I see this uh, you know, cup shape possibly forming here. We have that 20-day EMA has just crossed above the 50. Really nice look. PMO rising has just made it above the zero line. You've got that move right there on the scooter. You can see that little pop. Um, not quite to that hot zone yet. We are seeing some pretty decent volume at this point when I look at the OBV. We do have rising bottoms right now. I will be, again, I'm always curious how the volume impact for the day will be on that OBV. If we get a nice high amount of positive volume, that will take that OBV likely above those previous tops because the OBV takes all the volume and if it's an up day, adds it to the running total and if it's down day, subtracts it. And that is your scooter mover of the day.
Okay, let's get started with upgrades and downgrades. The first name that we're going to look at here is Freeport McMoran FCX, and this is a gold stock. For those of you that follow gold stocks, they've really been on a tear. They've been outperforming the broader markets, not so with FCX. So very well may be a gold play with valuation uh, because it is at a lower level. We're going to get into some upgrades with gold in a bit. But we can see that the stock has down reversed this downtrend here. And more recently, it is marking time, potentially forming the space. I would need to see the stock break up above that 200-day simple moving average in order for the stock to have more freedom, if you will, to advance further. But your RSI and MACD are both positive for this stock. Let's take a look at another company that was upgraded today. The ticker symbol is LH and this is Laboratory Corp. The stock really has not responded to that upgrade. It's really just marking time here after hitting a new high about two weeks ago. So it's very constructive that it's finding support at this upward trending 10-day simple moving average. Not what, sure what it would take to propel the stock higher, perhaps earnings. But again, both your RSI and and MACD are in positive territory with this upgrade. Let's go ahead and look at a company that formerly was a retail stock, but it is now much more closely related to moves in Bitcoin, and that's overstock. In fact, they're selling or in the marketplace to sell their retail, internet retail space and solely focus on Bitcoin. We can see the stock again. This is a downtrend. The stock price up here in March down to their trough here in June. It's had a very, very nice reversal. I talked about stocks breaking up above their 200 day as being constructive because what happens is the shorter term simple moving average. In this case, this is your 10 day. It has already pulled up above the 50, poised to break up above that 200. That is a golden cross. It's very constructive. It means the near-term momentum has shifted. What it will do is pull up these longer-term simple moving averages. The RSI is a bit overbought here, but we're still in good standing. The stock looks quite constructive. We can take a look at a regional bank that got upgraded. This is Sterling Bank Corp. S. TL. And the stock really is looking quite constructive. It's right now forming the right side of a base. The upgrade really didn't impact the stock that much, but bank stocks have been struggling a bit over the last couple of days. We can see that this RSI is really just marking time time in line with the stock's price, but it is up there in positive territory, as is the MACD. And then one last upgrade that we can look at is Slack, and W-O-R-K is the ticker symbol. A little difficult to get a real read on it. There's not a lot in the way of history, but for now, it does seem to be marking time. Stock actually declined on the upgrade, so not a lot of conviction there. Let's go ahead and move on to some of these downgrades. And I did mention that gold stocks have been a couple of analysts are downgrading them. And that has everything to do with the valuation, I would argue, because the name we're going to look at here is Royal Gold, RGLD. Take a look at this huge uptrend, very not uh, not like FCX that has not been participating, but really it is by all measures extended. We can see the RSI is up here in overbought territory. It can stay there, but it's with an eye toward a potential pullback. Your MACD is in an uptrend, and realistically, the stock did not. It was pulled back a little, but buyers came in and support it. So those those gold bugs out there are going to just keep this uptrend going. Another downgrade is a insurance stock, a AFLAC, AFL. This, this one did dip on the downgrade, but we do still have a positive RSI and MACD. And we are still above, I would look for a pullback potentially to this 55 level, which is the top of this prior base, still in good standing there. And we had another downgrade Home Depot. This is worth noting because retail sales came out today and home retailers, home furnishers, the retail sales numbers dropped. But take a look. We did get this downgrade. The stock had hit a new high. Not a lot in the way of response. And that's constructive. We're down 
a little more than a half of a percent. Uptrend still very firmly in place. In fact, any kind of pullback to that 10 day could very well be a buying opportunity. Another retailer that dropped today is a restaurant stock wing stop. This one has been a real winner year to date. It did pull back about 2% on the downgrade, but found support at this upward trending 10 day simple moving average. So it very well may be a good entry point. We can see historically pullbacks to that 10 day have been ideal. Your RSI and your MACD still both quite positive. And we can take a look at one other name that was downgraded today, also in the restaurant space, Darden Restaurant, down about 1%. But again, it, this is a failed breakout. Oftentimes, the second or third breakout attempt will work. The stock is very much in a confirmed uptrend. Restaurant sales were very strong in that retail sales number today. We can see this MACD is trending upward. And we can take a look at one last name, AGN, that was downgraded today. And this is uh, after this gap up, it's talking about the uh, merger possibilities. The stock really is marking time uh, not attractive either way up or down. And that's it for upgrades and downgrades. We will be right back after this. Welcome back. We are going to present to you a new segment today. Aaron mentioned earlier that the dollar is up. Uh, it's not up just today. It is up for the year. And that strong dollar is adding to last year's strength. So we can take a quick peek at that UUP, which is a, the US dollar index. This is that gap up today. But more importantly, you can see that that general trend has been upward. And this upward uh, strong dollar does not bode well for large multinational companies based in the US because, of course, goods are going to be more expensive to those areas that they are exporting to. And in fact, there was a study that came out of the S&P 500 companies that have reported so far for this quarter. Over half of them cited a strong dollar as uh, presenting possible headwinds. So what I've done is compiled a list of the top 10 companies by market cap that export. And Apple far and away leads every list as far as being one of the largest exporters around the world. And we're looking here at a daily price chart of Apple. And the stock really is holding in well. You can see that this 10 day simple moving average is acting as support. You like to see that in an uptrend. Your RSI is positive as is your MACD. And so uh, Apple, I would argue, the fears of strong dollar headwinds have not quite uh, hit the stock. Of course, we are gonna wanna see how the company comes out when they release their earnings. Uh, let's go ahead and take a look at the second largest exporter. And again, this is going to be by market cap. These are your big heavyweight stocks. A lot of energy stocks uh, appear in that top 10 listing. This is Exxon. And Exxon, of course, true to other energy stocks, is going to be very responsive to the price of oil. They are an integrated exploration and production company. And these guys really are going to be quite a bit more sensitive to the uh, price of oil. So I'm just going to pull up uh, on stockcharts.com, show you how you can easily assess and keep track of oil pricing. This is the WTIC, which is the light oil crude contract. It's just hovering here around 59 and a half. And for those of you that follow energy stocks, and in particular, the price of oil, it's been said that $60, 55, 60 right in here is going to be needed as far as the price of oil in order to support and help these energy stocks 
go higher. But of course, with this energy, we have a lot of supply and demand issues, as well as geopolitical issues that will come into play. So for now, we can see Exxon had this drop here, attempted to reverse. It's seemingly finding a bit of support. It's in a trading range. I would be neutral on the stock. We can see that this RSI is just at that 50. And your MACD, this is what happens when stocks get into a bit of a flat trading range that MACD will level off. So you're, you're in okay standing, but certainly there are any number of other growth stocks that would capture my attention more. Uh, another big exporter is autos, auto manufacturing. And this, of course, is Ford. And uh, Ford, actually, the U in the UK, the Brits really love Ford. And in particular, they love the Ford Fiesta. Uh, there are, of course, other countries that Ford exports to. And this stock really is acting quite constructively. From my work, I'm looking for stocks that are breaking out of these bases and then also finding support at upward trending simple moving averages. And that in fact is what we are seeing. We can see that that RSI is positive as is the MACD. And in today's retail sales report, auto sales did come in uh, quite constructively. Let's go back and look at another big exporter. This is going to be another energy stock, Chevron, in line with Exxon. These guys are uh, in that exploration and production space. Again, very sensitive to that price of oil. I would argue that Chevron is a bit more of a leader in the uh, energy space. We can see the stock is poised to break out and hit a new high. We're currently trading at about 125 and that high is 126. So we are super close, a breakout of this above that 126 would be quite constructive, but overall the leadership characteristics are evident as far as its outperformance relative to other energy stocks. And then uh, let's go ahead and move on because we do have another auto manufacturer and that is going to be General Motors. And General Motors really cut their US production. They off moved their production site off to Mexico and China, but that doesn't mean that they're not exporting. Take a look at this. The uh, General Motors is in line with Ford. And a lot of this, we talked about consumer spending, pick it up, picking up. It will generally impact positively these auto uh, manufacturers. And we can see that the stock is breaking out of a two-week base today. We also have that positive RSI and MACD acting very, very constructively. It's been kind of a tough period for some of these autos. We can go back and take a look at a bit of a longer term chart to give you a little bit more in the way of perspective as to how constructively these stocks are behaving here more recently. This is taking us into uh, in GM in particular, it peaked back here at the end of 2017 and is still trying to get out of the woods, for lack of a better word. Uh, let's go ahead and look, uh, move right on. Pfizer is, of course, one of the world's largest pharmaceutical uh, companies. And Pfizer provides vaccines, drugs globally. But we can see that Pfizer has pulled back. This has everything to do with U.S. policy, Trump's uh, initiation and attempt to target these drug companies and lower drug costs. The stock has pulled back very orderly to this upward trending 50 day simple moving average. However, if we take a look at these other signals, we can see that the RSI has turned negatively and your MACD is poised to break below this net neutral zero. Now this is a very shorter term view when you're looking at a daily price chart. I'm encouraged because the stock is finding support at this upward trending 50 day simple moving average. Uh, let's go ahead and move on. Another big tech stock, this is going to be a household name. Cisco is a huge importer, uh, exporter. This is all about 5G and Cisco is anticipating that over the next five years, they're expecting global internet traffic to triple. So that's huge. The company has been on an acquisition spree. We can see that the stock is breaking out to a new high. Again, your shorter term moving average is constructively in an uptrend and your outside signals are also positive. Another 
big bellwether tech name that is up here in those top 10 in the way of exporters is Intel. And realistically, most semiconductor stocks, if not all, have a large portion of their sales that are derived overseas, whether it's China or elsewhere. Intel is listed in the top 10 simply because of the size of the company. But I will tell you, Intel is not participating in this recent strength that we've seen in semiconductor stocks. It's pulling back 2% today. While it's encouraging that it has broken above these simple moving averages, overall, I would argue there are plenty of other semiconductor stocks that are quite a bit more constructive looking. And then the last name on our list is a consumer. And really, consumer staples is an area that you can drill down. You'll see a number of ex multinational exporters, but the largest of the bunch is Procter & Gamble. And this stock has really been an outperformer, not only among consumer staples, but even among the broader markets, the S&P. And we can see it's in an uptrend, finding support at this upward trending 10-day simple moving average, your RSI and your MACD in confirmed uptrends. So uh, Procter & Gamble looks quite constructive. They have operations in 80 different countries. So strong dollar be darned. <laughs> and that's it for Around the World in 10 Stocks. And here we have on the slide, a list of those 10 stocks that we reviewed. And these are, in fact, of course, your largest exporters by market cap. Excellent. All right. It is time now for Around the World in 10 Stocks. I know you've just been talking for quite a while. Do you want to go first? Or I, I could go first if your voice is getting a little. <laughs> um, yeah. So we are go right ahead. Okay. Yeah, I feel bad making you talk that whole time. So, <laughs> so I wanted to talk today. Um, I'm going to share, um, you know, this system, I, so to speak, that we are putting together for Chartwise Women. And I wrote about it in Chart Watchers this last week, and we call it the pink line. And it's simply, honestly, the pink line is. A chandelier exit. So it's not like we came up with any crazy formula for it. But I wanted to find something that we could use that would make those entries and exits a little bit more of a mechanical model. Because if you can take the emotion out of your trades, uh, you're going to do a lot better. So I wanted to start with AMD. This chart I actually did have in my Chart Watchers article. And I was going to show you how you would trade it using the pink line and the blue line, which is a 50-day simple moving average. I was really surprised as I've gone through this. And I, I'm starting to, to try and hunt out um, you know, some negative choppy stocks to see if this works. Uh, I, I thought General Mills would work that way. Uh, I'm going to show you that next. But actually, it's... It, it worked in this past year. Uh, we're we're seeing some pretty good returns using this system. Uh, I I'm pretty impressed anyway. So I'm looking forward to sharing that with you. So I'm going to start with the idea is you enter when price is above both the pink and blue lines, but not just any entry, because you don't want to enter when the trend is going lower when that 50-day EMA is moving lower. So you wouldn't enter. So for, for, an, for example, right here, you did get the close above both the pink and the blue line, but the blue line is in decline. That's 50-day simple moving average is declining. So you, know, you don't want to add risk to your trades. Why would you go in to a downtrending stock? not worth it. There are plenty of other stocks out there where you can find some good entries. So we can see that the 50-day EMA came down. It started to make that turn. And as soon as it started to turn up, and I'm going simply by the closing prices here, when it turns up, that's when you enter. So let's start over here, left to right. So your entry back here, um, and I, I think the entry would have probably happened earlier than this, but let's just say you enter here when you've got um, 
the price is above the pink line and the blue line. So I'm just starting right down here. And so price continues up. It continues up uh, above both the pink line and the blue line. And when you come here and you get that exit, you can now sell half or part of your position as it crosses down below that pink line. Now, I also like to wait in most cases until it crosses below both. But in this case, if you look, it really doesn't change your um, profit that much. In fact, let's go ahead and look at it. Like I said, I'm refining this as I go. So I'm finding just some really interesting things going on. So yes, back here. So you don't exit here because price is still above the blue line as well. And look at that blue line. It's, you know, the 50 day moving average is still climbing high. So yeah, price went below that um, pink line, but nope, I'm staying. And again, same things happening here, but we're getting that moving average going higher. Yes, it would have been great to have sold at the top. No lie. But you know what? We want to book profit. It doesn't matter. I mean, you want to get in there and then preserve your your profits. You don't want to um, take that chance. And when you start doing that, when you start questioning yourself and you bring that emotion in, uh, your, your trades are going to, you need to be consistent in your system. So uh, again, I was studying this before we started Chartwise Women and I'm pretty happy with it. So you would have exited based on that system when it went below the pink and the blue. And if you'd even entered here, and like I said, I suspect you would have entered even earlier than this, you booked a 63% profit there. Uh, the next one is where am I going to get in? Where am I going to get in? Okay, well, above the pink line, not above the blue line. Above the pink line, above the blue line, but as I said, moving average is continuing lower. Well, do I get to enter down here when it goes above the pink line? Well, when it goes above both the pink and the blue lines, Yes, that's when you would enter. And I'm gonna actually sharpen that up to the close for that day. Uh, I don't wanna overstate my model here. Uh, so anyway, you enter there and then you continue on because we don't go below that pink line. Okay, we go below the pink line here, but whew, we actually close above the blue line. So we stay in and price continues and we're now above that pink line. Okay, now we're falling, we're below the blue, but we're still above the pink line. All right, we fall below the pink line, uh, but we're not below the blue line just yet. So we wait, we wait, we wait, and it gets really close to that average, but it, we're still in because it doesn't close below it. So you're continuing higher, and at this point in time, if you were holding it right now from when that entry point was, that's a 66% gain. Now, I'm not going to overstate this model. I really am not because I haven't done the back testing on it. Uh, and this set of stock, you know, in general, AMD has been in a pretty nice uptrend. But at the same time, you know, it did fall below its 50 day EMA or, sorry, simple moving average. I mean, it, it was trending down a little bit too. So even though you had these price tops, uh, you know, you are still getting in at the right places and you're still getting out at the right places. So I like that one. And then I'm going to just show you really quickly here. General Mills was another one I was looking at uh, to annotate. And I thought this one might be good because we had a lot of flat price movement. And so I wanted to see uh, what those entries and exits would look like. So in this case, you would enter as soon as price gets above both the pink and blue lines continues forth. We're holding it. We're holding in the ah, price shock. Uh, we end up below both of them. And so we sell because that's how this, it's a mechanical system. We don't just wait around. So if you had done that, it looks like you still might have booked a little bit of a profit. I would say in this case, you just pretty much broke even. So when do we get back in? Well, that looks good, right? We've gotten above and below the blue lines or the pink and blue lines, but the the moving average is still moving lower. So it isn't, it isn't an entry. Price continues lower, it breaks way down below both. You come here and now again, you're, you're above both the pink and blue, but you don't enter here because the moving average is still moving lower. But as soon, you can see it just barely there. As soon as it starts to turn up, 
and you're above both, you enter. And so that would put you in right at that uh, clo close right there. And so that's where I have that marked. Continue on, you're above the lines, you're above the pink lines, and then, ah, price shock. But even though you got price shocked, you still are able to book a 16% profit. And in this case, you enter again, moving average is moving up, you're above both of them. And currently you would still be holding it at about a 5% profit. So I really am becoming more and more impressed with this pink line system. This was the other chart I had in Chart Watchers. And this one is Starbucks. And I would say, look, you know, picking Starbucks, I thought, you know, look at this. The 50 day is pretty much rising the whole time. I was expecting this model to do well on this particular chart. Um, and, and it did. And again, same, same thing. Um, you're, you enter um, when actually this looks like the blue line might have been lowering. I'm going to say that I probably wouldn't have entered until it started to turn up. So I'd be just a little bit higher than that. Let me fix that. Like I said, kind of refining this still. So blue line doesn't start to turn up and you're still above both, but it doesn't start to turn up till right here. So you'd be in there instead of where I said. So instead of a 22% profit, uh, only a 19% profit. Uh, you end up below those lines, you get that close below both, and that's when you're out waiting for the entry. You're waiting until that blue line starts to turn back up. Like I said, I'm gonna double check this. Yeah, the entry would have been just a little bit further down over here. There we go. And again, your exit, is back here as soon as you get the close below both lines. And at that point, you've got a 14% move. Get back in, 50-day EMA is rising, you're above both, and you'd still be holding it with an 18% profit. So like I said, I am not gonna overstate the success of this model because I am just now starting to really get into it. And what I suspect I'm gonna start doing for my own um, analysis is to use my PMO like I usually do and the uh, sim uh, the EMAs, the trend models for decision point to find my stocks and then go in and use these um, this mechanical type model to give me my easy entry and exit. Like I said, the no brainers. Now, and again, like I said, I don't know how successful this is um, all the way through. I would welcome uh, folks trying this out. And again, the pink line is just a chandelier exit. I'm not going to claim fame for uh, calculating that. Uh, I, I'm just using it as a possibility. I'd always wanted to look at them. Uh, they do show those exits. And, um, you know, that's buying the stock, let's face it, guys, is pretty easy. Getting in, figuring out you want to get in is pretty easy. The hard part is when to get out. And so I always wanted to study the chandelier exit. I've been looking at um, Bollinger Bands and uh, Keltner channels. But when I saw this and it, the simplicity just really intrigued me. And uh, so I'm going to continue do, you know, testing this out and uh, I'll keep, keep you informed. But that is my anatomy of three different trades. Now you get to go, Mary Ellen. What is an anatomy of a couple of your trades? Oh, you bet. Yeah. So my trades are uh, the first one that I am going to be starting with is not necessarily a good, a positive trade, but I'll share with you what got me in. And as Aaron mentioned, even more importantly, what the exit strategy is. So we're looking at a stock here. This is fresh. PET, FRPT, in the consumer staples space. This stock is, uh, you can see it's been in a very nice uptrend, certainly year to date, and the has everything to do with the vibrancy within animal products. This is, of course, Fresh Pet is a food products provider. So when I'm looking at a stock, I like to see this uptrend. I see historically that a pullback to that 10 day, that's your green line, simple moving average can be an ideal 
uh, opportunity as a buy point. Oftentimes I want to see how is the rest of that group doing. So we're looking at XLP. That of course is the consumer staple sector. And let me go ahead back and I've highlighted here the entry point and that is in the beginning of June. I like this big volume bar as it broke back above that 10 day simple moving average making the stock attractive in the sense that this could be institutional support support and that it could power that uptrend a bit further. And then again, let's go ahead back to the consumer staples sector. During that same mid-June period, there was a very brief pullback here in staples stocks, but they rebounded really quite nicely. So this was another item that attracted my attention because the stock was in an uptrend in an industry group or sector that was finding money flows. Take a look at this big volume here as these staples stocks resumed their uptrend. So then going back to this, the stock did in fact perform quite nicely. It hit a new high here within a two week period. I should have sold but uh, no, my rules based for selling is if the stock breaks support and in particular that 50 day simple moving average, that's gonna be my line. So in fact, it did break below that 50 day. We can see in conjunction that RSI turned negative and we have that negative crossover on the MACD, that black line down through the red. So while the stock has deteriorated only a little since this break below that 50 day, it really has been in a go nowhere environment. So by selling this, I was able to put those funds to work in areas that have been outperforming. And we can see now the stock is in essence really just trapped below this 50 day. It's any type of upside reversal uh, attempt is being met with resistance and your MACD is really just waffling here. So it's market marking time. I expect at some point it certainly will break up. The dynamics fundamentally are quite strong for this stock, but for now it looks to be dead money. So that was one of my uh, more recent trades. Let's take a look at another stock that I got into here recently and I do still own. And this is Coupa Software. And this is another area where we can very simply take a look at other stocks in the space. I like to use IGV. This is the software ETF. And we can see the stock has uh, this software group has been a real winner. We had a little bit of a faltering period here. Of course, this is in line with the drop in the broader markets in May. But since then, it has recovered this pullback and then some. So software stocks have certainly been quite healthy. So we can go back because within and among software stocks, this is a bit of a smaller company, but we can see it has been a real winner. Uh, Coupa came out with earnings in May. And the, the uh, actually this is that actually in early June, late May. And we can see this is the advance following their super strong earnings. Their growth year over year was 400%. So because it is a smaller stock, you'll get these triple digit, but the earnings growth prospects for next year, 280 2% year over year earnings growth is what Wall Street is anticipating. So upon entering the stock, I am staying with it because we can see it is, this is that 10 day simple moving average. These faster moving stocks will obey this. And we can see that it is still finding very sound support at this upward trending 10 day simple moving average. Your MACD is, I'm sorry, RSI is above that 50. And then your MACD is up here above that zero. So this up, uptrend here with Coupa is very firmly in place. For those of you interested, you can see anytime the stock pulls back to that 10 day, that is an ideal entry point for this strong stock. One last name that I can share with you. This is another not so great. Actually, uh, the stock went on to drop lower. I was able to get out uh, in a timely fashion. This is five below. This is a discount retailer. They came out in late March. This is this gap up here on very strong earnings. The stock pulled back and it was in this period that I 
entered this stock, they had 34% year-over-year growth. Analysts were revising estimates higher, and the stock did, in fact, advance quite a bit out of this break back up above these simple moving averages. And as the stock began to deteriorate, your first signs of distribution and a potential uptrend reversal is a break below this 10-day simple moving average. But it's not until these other outside signals start flashing negatively. And I'm talking about that RSI breaking below that 50. We did have that negative crossover signal black line down through the red, which peaked here. These are all warning signs, but once that MACD gets below that zero and it's in line with that RSI turning negatively, and for those of you that are not, uh, I, for me again, it is gonna be that break below that 50 day. So in essence, this stock was a round tripper for me, but you do wanna have those sell signals. I have certainly a lot more in the way of winning trades, but it, I think it's important to share with you those signals so that you can exit your stock in a timely fashion. That's going to keep you in the game because while the stock has really bounced around, it has been in a go nowhere environment. While the broader markets, there are a ton of others, certainly within software and other strong areas where you can put your money to work. So those are my anatomy of a trade. Excellent. Uh, it is really fun to kind of go back and, and really when you are trading, I think it's important to do a journal, uh, mm -hmm. you know, to, to see what you did right, what you did wrong. So anyway, thanks so much for that. It is time for da, 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 10 in 10. And today, Mary Ellen has graciously accepted the challenge of annotating the charts and I will be feeding her the stock symbols uh, as I do for Tom. Uh, we'll see if we can get through all 10, but if we can't, we can't. So let's go ahead and get it started, Mary Ellen. The very first stock is MLM. Okay, Martin Marietta, and this is in uh, an sure area. Share that screen. All right, we will. And um, MLM is in an area of the broader markets that has picked up here of late. So we can take a look at this stock. And again, we are looking at a daily price chart here. And uh, let's take a look because we had the stock price hit a near term high in price here in June. And it has pulled back since then, but the uptrend is very much in place. So uh, I'm thinking, Aaron, what I might do is go through the stocks and then annotate them and share them with you. Uh, otherwise, I'm not sure if I can. Well, let's give it a go, see if we can get through. Oh, uh, come on. You can do it. You only have to add a few. <laughs> <laughs> you don't want homework after the show. <laughs> that is too true, too true. OK, so here is that peak in price. And we can see that the stock really has just pulled back quite orderly but is finding support at this upward trending 50 day simple moving average. Your RSI is up there in positive territory. During this period of consolidation, this is very normal. I talked about this where your MACD will just trend sideways and it's just indicating that the momentum has slowed a bit. And that is very standard with an eye toward the stock uh, marking time. It may take earnings or another uh, significant maybe news related item to spark the stock's uh, eventual breakout of this shorter term area of consolidation. All righty. And the next one is always our most popular in the chat room. There actually was a tie today between Microsoft and AMD. And since I just went through an AMD chart pretty detailed, I'm going to give you Microsoft. All righty. Yeah. And Microsoft, of course, I talked about IGV and these software stocks being in an uptrend. Microsoft is a bellwether among these software stocks, but I would argue it's not, has not been an outperformer. It's certainly one that if you own it, this uptrend, this is what we talked about, is very much in place. We 
we are seeing a little bit of a pullback, but this is where history is going to serve you well because we can go back to this period here in late June. The stock broke below that 10 day simple moving average and was able to recover. All the while we can see during that period that the RSI during that pullback period remained above that net neutral 50. So again, another signal that you can stay with the stock. This is another one that has been really trending mostly sideways so that the MACD, while it is positive, it is just trending as the stock is also in a bit of a go nowhere environment. So if you own it, I would stay with it. It's a very, in a very vibrant, strong area. It is a leadership certainly name as far as their innovation. And technically it still remains very sound. All righty. Next one up I will give you is NovoCure and that is N-V-C-R. Okay. And, uh, this, the healthcare space has been a bit erratic of late, certainly, but this stock has been a real winner and it is continuing to remain in a very confirmed uptrend. So a lot of times when I'm looking for stocks that are exhibiting strength, I like to see them uh, after they break out of a base for that stock to continue to be able to expand upon that and build on that. So we can go back to this period here and uh, see if I can get my drawing skills a little better. And we can see that this stock broke out of a two plus month base. And for those of you not familiar, a base, a stock attempts to hit a new high, pulls back, and then breaks out to a new high in price. And the longer term that base is, the longer your advance out of that base. So this is still a very attractive stock. If you own it, you can stay with it. And it's another one where if the stock were to pull back to that 10 day simple moving average, it could be a buy point. Also, you wanna pay attention on this RSI, it is a bit overbought. That's up above that 70, but we can go back historically and see that it can remain in overbought for a lengthy period of time. That is about a five week period. So it's not alarming. It's just something to note. And then we can also see that the this MACD is still trending upward and very much above that net neutral zero. So that's a quite a lovely chart. Excellent. Let's see next one up, number four, W-E-R-N, Werner. Okay, and we, see, we saw JBHT come out with strong numbers in that trucking space. We're seeing, interestingly, these, I'll get into this a bit later in sector rotation, but these transportation stocks are really picking up quite a bit. This one is up 4%. I would argue though, I could actually draw a bit of a base and tell you that it's coming out of a base. But from my work, I do not like the choppy action that is being exhibited here. And of course, trucking stocks have had a tough go of it of late. Uh, we're not quite, let me just go ahead and move over to the right here a bit further. And we can see that in today's action, the stock is breaking out of this two, uh, six week base, which is constructive. But when we look at this really choppy volatility here, it's not gonna be for my work that attractive. I like to see a bit more in the way of an orderly uh, trading a tighter trading action. We can see today that it gapped up here close to that 33, but it looks poised to close in the lower portion of that trading range. That said, we do have other outside signals that are quite constructive, and that would be that RSI and that MAC D, we also have shorter term moving averages that are in an uptrend. So technically it's very, very sound. For me, it's just a personal style. I I'm not attracted to this kind of volatility, but overall the stock does look constructive. All righty, next one up is INFI. Okay, now that's one that I am not that familiar with. So let's see what we get when we pull it up. Uh, 
Okay, so Infinity Pharmaceuticals, and I'm going to surmise that this is a bit of a smaller, it's only a dollar. <clears throat> and for, for me, I would need to see generally four to five dollars. That's going to be my break because take a look at this really super low volume. And by looking at that, it's going to tell you that this stock is going to be really very responsive, certainly to any kind of news. It's going to be a bit more volatile. And while pharma, the bigger pharmas are struggling a bit, the uh, smaller names aren't going to be as impacted. But I will tell you that this stock did attempt to break out of this base and it did falter. So we can certainly draw this base here. And uh, for those of you that are familiar with Bill O'Neill and his work, you could in fact draw a cup with a handle because the space did not get up to that prior high. So you have constructive technical indicators could, because the RSI while trending downward, this is because it's in this flat base building period here. Uh, so we have technically constructive, but again, the price on this and that super low volume is going to keep me out. All righty. And the next, next one, the next one is W day. Okay, work day. And this is taking us back to software stocks, very vibrant area. And we can take a look. I know they are pulling back a bit today, but let's take a look at Workday because this is another one that has been in a general uptrend, but again, it has that rather dicey back and forth uh, volatility that for my work is not uh, particularly attractive. Particularly, again, I showed you Coupa. There are any number of very strong software stocks that are going to find general support at their upward trending 10-day simple moving average. Uh, that said, you're still in good standing. For this chart, I would use a 50-day simple moving average as your line of demarcation as far as a potential buying opportunity. We can see for the most part when it pulls back to that 50 day that has been a buying opportunity barring this break below as long as your MACD and your other indicators are remaining in positive territory above that 50 you can certainly stay with the stock as well with this MACD so despite the volatility for those of you that can uh, sleep at night and you're you're fine with this type of again, back and forth, you can use that 50 day as your buy point. We are potentially pulling back down into that 50 day uh, because again, it is in a strong area. So from that, it is quite constructive. All righty, next one up is COPA Holdings and the symbol is CPA. All righty, and that is an a airline stock that is primarily based in South America. And those, uh, not only airline stocks have been doing well, but this particular CPA has been doing well. There is a growth in that South American market. So this stock is really quite constructive looking. And uh, if you own it, certainly stay with it because the dynamics that are in play within Asia. Brazil is making strides with their economy. We can see that this up tr upward trending 10-day simple moving average has been acting as support. We have this positive RSI as well as your MACD generally in positive territory during this entire uptrending period here. And also I talk about stocks uh, breaking out of bases. This would of course be indicative of that because in essence we had uh, this particular base here. I'm going to get rid of that but this actually is a pretty classic cup with handle because we had this gap up here. I'm going to presume it was earnings related and the price did not quite reach that prior high and then we had an additional handling handle here that the stock was able to break out of. I will have to practice my drawing skills, but it's in a very confirmed uptrend and a very constructive and positive looking stock. 
All righty, let's see. Next one is the banking ETF, KRE. Yeah, this has struggled, I have to say. And bank stocks in general, of course, are suffering a bit, but those regional banks are really having a tough go of it. So we can see that this regional bank ETF ETF here more recently has been deteriorating while the broader market has been uh, in essence, of course, the S&P is hitting a new high. So while we could argue that this is in a bit of a flat basing period, <laughs> I'm so sorry, because this is, uh, let's just see if I can get you the uh, outlining here and mark these up properly because we can see that e, this KRE is in a bit of a trading range. It's going to take some solid earnings from some of these regional banks to potentially pick this area up. But of course, we are in the throes of an environment with lower interest rates, and that is not advantageous to these banking stocks. So for, for now, it's in a bit of a go-nowhere environment. What I do not like is the fact that these simple moving averages are trending downward for the most part. And what you'll see occur, we can go back here historically, when you have these attempts to break out to new highs, they are met with resistance now at lower and lower levels. So a bit of a mixed picture, but overall negative on the regional banks. All right, CMCA, Comcast. Oh yeah, that's another area that has picked up quite a bit. The media, certainly a bit well-known name Netflix is in this area, but let's uh, take a look, CMCSA. Got it. All righty. Yeah. So I talked about uh, Comcast. This is actually very attractive. As a chart goes, we can take a look. And again, I'm going to take us back to this concept of stocks breaking out of bases because when they do, not all breakouts are going to work, but when they do, it is a beautiful thing in the sense that the stock is able to go ahead and hit a new high in price. And ideally, we want to see that occurring on volume. And as a matter of fact, this is your breakout point. We can see a nice pickup here in the volume relative to historical standards. We also have those other outside technical indicators with your RSI and MACD trending upwards. So I would argue that this still has further upside. We can go back to this base breakout here in February and see that the stock was able to advance rather significantly out of that base. All right, last one, UPS. All righty. That's, uh, I can bet, not such a great one, although we are seeing a pickup in these transportation stocks. Some of these bigger freight movers have struggled of late. Now, uh, interestingly, whoever brought this to the, our attention, it's actually looking really very compelling here. And this could be in line. Uh, it is interesting to me that we are seeing a move into transports and they have struggled of late. Uh, let's go ahead and take a look at this current action. And this is going to be last Friday and then it is carrying through beyond that. So from my work, when I'm looking for downtrend reversals, I need to see that stock's price break back up above these shorter term, simple, and in fact, longer term moving averages, because what that's going to do is pull up your shorter term and create a much more constructive and positive pattern. I like the volume characteristics, and we're also getting the MACD and the RSI looking very constructive. So uh, this could, in fact, be the beginning of a potential downtrend reversal. It would be even more compelling if analysts were potentially raising estimates for the stock. Uh, but it certainly appears to be potentially undervalued, and that is your 10 in 10. Yep. And here are those symbols that we just, uh, Mary Ellen, annotated. I'll have these up after the show so that you can copy them to your own chart list with those annotations. All right. We will be right back with the final market update. Just a moment. 
Today's market volatility provides savvy traders and active investors with an abundance of profitable opportunities. At the Traders Expo Chicago, July 21st through 23rd, dozens of the most respected traders in the world, including Rick Santelli, John Najeri, and Tom Sosnoff, Linda Rashke, and Ralph Acampora, will explain how they're adapting their strategies and share the specific trading opportunities they've identified in equities, commodities, forex, futures, and cryptocurrencies. Claim your free pass to join them at ChicagoTradersExpo.com. All right, it is time for our final market update. Let's take a peek at what has been going on while we've been having so much fun. You can see the markets did, uh, at least the Dow, open to the positive side, but has been spending most of the morning on the downside. It is down 63 points currently. I'm going to actually make sure that this is even more up to date. Well going to cooperate. There we go. Okay, here we go. So what we're looking at right now is the Dow's actually trying to make a move to the upside here. We're back in positive territory at 0.02%. S&P 500 is starting to take back some of those losses from earlier this morning, but it continues to be lower at 0.2%. NASDAQ 100, is, or I'm sorry, the NASDAQ is up right now after pulling back and the New York Stock Exchange, we're seeing the same thing. Uh, also, Russell 2000 and mid caps, uh, really not having a bad day at all. They've spent most of the day in positive territory. After pulling back, they're now starting to move to the upside with the Russell 2000 up 0.18%. Treasury yields are rising 2.118%. The VIX is beginning to fall, but we're still seeing a reading at 1267. Dollar is up, big gap up, and now starting to consolidate that one cent gain. It is now at 2633. GLD is lower on the day, but look at that move to the upside, really trying to take back those losses and get back into that positive territory. Currently, GLD at 133.17. USO started up today and then has just really. Um, fallen very quickly. Currently, it is down 1.34%. And 20-year bonds, TLT, we're seeing a gap down, but uh, trying to make a move back up to cover that gap. And that's all I have for our final market update. All right, we have decided that we are going to move right on into Momentum Sleepers. And Mary Ellen, I'm going to hand the screen over to you. And what uh, stocks are you looking at that might be momentum sleepers? Yeah, so what we're looking at here, I'm going after areas of the market that have been in an outperformance mode. I talked about software stocks. This first one is Wix, W-I-X, and this particular company provides a platform for individuals who want to create their own website. And we can see this is taking us back to January. Take a look at this strong uptrend that the stock has been in. We can see during that May period, just an area of pullback. It held in really remarkably well. That is a sign of strength. Over the last five weeks, we can see the stock has been in a go nowhere environment. It's waffling around this 140 area. I'm focusing on stocks that have outperformed because this outperformance is very for very sound reasons. The company is in a growth phase next year. They're looking actually this year is a little bit of a turnaround, but next year, 73% year over year earnings growth are is anticipated. We can go back historically to other periods. This is mid 2018, where the stock marked time for several weeks and did advance out of that. And I would look for a similar action. I talked about when these stocks are building a base, they will, the RSI will often just gravitate to that net neutral 50. We are seeing a negative black line down through the red on the MACD, but that does not necessarily mean that the game is over. We had a similar action here and it was able to recover from that. A couple of other momentum sleepers I wanted to point out to you because a lot of, they're really uh, historically, we can look at their behavior and it can be really quite helpful. This first one, uh, next one is Miller, M-L-H-R. I'm going to go ahead and pull up a daily price chart on here to give you a little bit more in the way of perspective. What we're looking at is a gap up here in price. This is all about earnings. The company surprised to the upside, had very strong numbers, big gap up. And the subsequent action following that gap up is 
very, very similar to what you're going to see. You're going to want to pay attention to this action during earnings season after stocks gap up. Oftentimes, they will mark time. So I'm talking about a momentum sleeper, a stock that's in a bit of a trading zone here, back and fill, and it is with an eye toward a potential leg up. And it's all about analysts continuing to revise their estimates higher upon or after the release of strong earnings. At some point, you very well may see another leg up despite the already significant gain in MLHR. Let's take a look at another uh, sleeper, if you will. This is Ingersoll Rand, larger cap name within this machinery, general industrial. And we can see that overall, in general, the stock has been a real out performer. And what I'm pointing you toward here is this recent one month period. Again, the stock in a back and fill period while the broader markets are advancing higher. And at some point, it's with an eye toward the stock continuing its advance because really quite simply when you're looking at volume characteristics if you see more or higher volume on up days in general that is indicating the stock is quietly under accumulation i think i have time for one more here among these momentum sleepers and we can take a look at pwr and this stock is, of course, in the technology sector and the uh, company. It's actually it's not. I apologize. Heavy construction. It's in line with that Ingersoll and Rand. And I talked about this area coming back into play here of late. This is, of course, the downtrend in the broader markets in May. The stock attempted to reverse and we're pulling back a little bit here, but by and large in a trading range. All, all the while, your RSI is still at that net neutral. So this is another one to keep an eye on because when we see a stock advance from 34 up to almost 40, that is a significant advance. It is due a pullback. So at some point in time, this is another one that is a cup with a handle. The handle's getting a little bit long in the tooth, but it is a very classic pattern. So keep an eye on this one. We could see it advance and emerge higher. And those are my momentum sleepers. All righty. Excellent. Uh, I've just been looking at the ones that uh, I came up with. And I came up with them using my, another scan. I always am using scans. I'm, I love them. I used a, one that I use, usually use for this segment called Momentum Sleepers. And uh, this scan you will find, uh, I've already written an article about it, and it was talking about um, making the PMO faster. Uh, I will, I'll post this in tonight's Market Watchers Live recap, the actual scan. But if you want some more discussion about how it works, um, I'll, I'll do that for you. But the main point I want to show you on this scan is that I actually changed the PMO um, settings from their default to the MACD default. Just I wanted to speed it up, but only as my scanning tool, not my analysis tool. So this is just a, a way for me to, with a momentum sleeper, I just want to speed up that, that PMO a little bit when I go find them. And then I do my analysis using my own, you know, my regular default, <clears throat> excuse me, PMO settings. So with that, I pulled out, I think I had 17 stocks come back. And of those, these were the ones that I found interesting. And what I found even more interesting is, Mary Ellen, you were going through yours, is that when I changed the chart style to our chart-wise women chart style with the pink and blue lines, I was really pretty intrigued. And I will show you why. So first of all, this is one I picked out because I saw that PMO making that turn. Um, you can see the 50 days starting to make a turn. These are the EMAs right here. OBV, you know, starting to, to look a little bit more healthy uh, on this rally. Uh, the scooter, though, is one of the, the, issue, the main things I did really like about the chart and why I brought it up as one of my sleepers. So this one, if you move it to that pink and blue line uh, 
model that we were doing. This isn't actually listed as an entry point. We are not above either the pink or the blue line. Uh, but you know what? The scan is looking for beat down stocks. And so in this case, it still really needs to ripen a little bit more, at least uh, according to uh, the, the uh, Chartwise Women model. Now let's go ahead and we'll pull up Olin Corp. And this one I really like the looks of, and I'm gonna annotate it for you just very briefly. And you can see we've been in a declining trend, right? Declining tops trend line, let's skinny that up a little bit. All right, that works. And so I marked and saw these declining tops and today we're getting that breakout. And it has moved today above both the 20 and the 50 day EMAs. We're currently getting a PMO buy signal. And I think that uh, the, the OBV doesn't look great. Um, I'm not gonna lie, but it's flat right now over the last few trading days on this rally. And the scooter actually is starting to perk up a bit. So I like the look of that, but if you move it into that Chartwise Women chart with the pink and blue lines, um, look in the thumbnail. Today, actually two days ago would have been the buy because the, it uh, crossed above that 50 day simple moving average. Price was already above the pink line. Uh, but now if you didn't catch that and you're catching it right now, uh, this would be your entry because you are seeing that 50 day EMA turning up and prices above both. So I thought that was interesting that I wasn't paying any attention to these two indicators when I did my scan and found uh, the ones that look good. And a couple of these I found interesting were in that position where, oh, according to that model, it's actually time to buy. All right, and again, I haven't back tested that model that far, but I, the more I look at it, the more excited I'm starting to be about it. Uh, right now, here is uh, Rockwell automation. And I saw it as a momentum sleeper in the fact that now we're just getting that breakout. The momentum has switched. We have that PMO moving to the upside after that whipsaw uh, on that sell signal. OBV, eh, you know, couldn't be, it could be better. But again, these are momentum sleepers. My scan is looking for beat down stocks that are starting to show some momentum going on. So Rockwell, I thought looked good, you know, breaking that declining tops trend line. And when I put it in that chart wise women, um, it's time to buy. <laughs> so I think that it, I have to look here at the the 50 day simple moving average hasn't quite turned around. So I take that back. Um, it's actually not quite time to buy. So maybe we look for that pullback and then we keep price above that simple moving average and then it will turn back up. This is one of the reasons I do kind of prefer an EMA because as soon as price would go above that EMA, um, the EMA turns up right then, it's a, it's a sh you, you put more emphasis on what happened uh, in more recent times versus the, uh, the earlier data. So you're putting more emphasis on that. And I'll, you know, like I said, I'm still checking this out. I'll have to see what that uh, does, but it might be better that it doesn't move like that uh, and that it does preserve you from getting in when it, it might not be a good time. You know, here's an example here, there were two opportunities to get in where it was above both the pink and the blue lines, but the 50 was still in decline. So you really shouldn't have, and, and sure enough. So that's why I would be a little not trustworthy of that fact, but I thought it was also interesting. Boingo Wireless was another one that I came up with. And you can see as far as the thumbnail, it's a little hard to tell here in the um, larger pane. It's, you know, you've got these PMO bottoms above the signal line. I think it might have given us a whipsaw um, sell signal. I, I can't really tell just this moment, but something if you want to investigate, you could. I don't like the OBV on this. I'm not going to lie. I would like to see at least it get a little bit higher. The scooter is doing okay. The main reason I picked it out is because it is coming out of this declining tops trend line. And let me go ahead and annotate that for you. Right there. Let's make it a little darker so we can see it better. 
So you can see it has been in this declining trend, but in the short term, it is breaking out and currently trading just above that dec uh, declining tops trend line. And like I said, we're getting another move to the upside here. Uh, hadn't had a chance to look at this one on our ChartWise women's scale. Let's take a peek. And yes, not quite. Not quite time. We're still seeing the 50 day simple moving average on decline. So even if we got price above that pink line and even above that the blue line, um, which again, 50 days moving average, simple moving average, we want to see it get above that. And we don't have that yet. So according to that particular model, it wouldn't actually be the time to get in. Um, and there are, are, are some confirmations that maybe uh, show that as well. U.S. Steel was my last one. And yes, it's been really beat down. Materials haven't been doing well. I, I even used Tom's relative strength to really decide if I wanted to include this on a momentum sleeper case. You can see that that area of the market, as far as the industry go group goes, is starting to outperform a little bit. We're moving nicely to the upside. Actually, that's the price. It's starting to perk up a little bit. Um, when you look at U.S. Steel against that industry group, we are starting to see a rise there. We're starting to see it also perform a little bit better than the S&P right here. And then also it is starting to uh, show that that industry group is starting to perk up because at first I was like, wow, you know, materials have been beat down and, uh, you know, not looking good real quick here to before we finish off. This would almost be an entry point. Yesterday actually would have been because I think it looks like the simple moving average had moved um, and, and started going up. Um, but I, I'd have to look at that more closely. I, I don't want to to uh, say that, yes, you should have gotten in yesterday. But it did look good. It's looking good now. If we can get that uh, moving average to start to turn back up, uh, that would be your entry. Again, I think if I were using, well, I know if I were using a simple or an exponential moving average, that would have already turned upward. But again, I'm not so, I have to test this out and see which one works better when I go back and back test. So that's all I had for Momentum Sleepers. And there is the slide coming up here with what we covered. And you know what? The show is about ready to end. Let's take a quick look at that poll, if we could. I know that uh, you came up with the question, Mary Ellen. You bet. Yeah, it's all about retail sales. The numbers came out today, but online retail sales jumped 1.7%. So we put it out there of these five stocks. Which ones do you, which one do you think over the next two months is looking like it may outperform? And we can see Amazon was the big winner. Do you have a pick there? Aaron? Yes, of the five, I also went with Amazon, just honestly looking at my PMO's configuration on all of them. Uh, Amazon looked the strongest. It's a little bit overbought, but mm -hmm. not that 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 much. And Amazon's looking like a flag formation right now too. Very technically yeah. constructive, and we'll see how their sales numbers came out to, uh, with their Prime Day yesterday and today. I actually went with stick, uh, SFIX, mm -hmm. and uh, has everything to do with their innovations. They've just debuted in the UK. They've expanded their product line to plus size and children. Analysts have a price target on that of uh, 38, which would be about a 15% appreciation. So that's my pick. Nice. Um, that was right there with Etsy for me. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. and you bet. Etsy. But honestly, like I said, for me, the, the Amazon, it just, with my primary indicator, it looked the best. So, oh my goodness. So end of another show. I am looking forward to continuing with that. You know, I know guys, uh, Martin Pring's coming tomorrow. I'm, I'm sure you're pretty excited about that too, Mary Ellen. Yes, that'll be very interesting. Yes, and then our friend Julius, he's gonna be here Thursday and uh, we're still uh, throwing around what topics we wanna do, but uh, I think it's gonna be a great show. He's always so much fun when he comes in. So I, I'm pretty excited about that as well. And then of course, don't miss Relative Strength Week. We're gonna have a lot of great guests in and we will talk about that on uh, the following week. So again, thanks Mary Ellen. 
Yes, always a lot of fun. And I will go ahead and close out our show. I want to thank you all for being with us today. Remember to complete the survey as you leave. You can see the link to the right of the viewer. I would be really interested what you, you think about uh, this model I'm developing and, and even any uh, helpful things you might uh, think I would like. Uh, we'll see you back. Have a happy trading time today and always.